you're fighting in Brazil that's a little bit closer to home, I guess, do you get to have any more support? Do you get to have people flying in? Is it any different for you in Brazil? Well, there's people coming from Ecuador, like a couple of, of my friends. Uh, one of my YouTube coaches is, is coming too. And people that I that I used to hang out before, with Trang before, they're coming also. And by the way, Sao Paulo looks a lot like where I live. So it's kind of familiar out here, so I feel good. And um, I saw, we saw you got you were having some acai yesterday. You're enjoying the local cuisine. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell myself, like, I will get my way the lowest I can so I can get one. And also, acai is not bad. It's fruit. I guess, <laughs> and I was just getting one because in California I eat almost like every day. I really love acai, and if I'm in Brazil, I don't eat the acai. It's going to be bad, so I did it. Did you make any arrangements? Because here uh, the fights are a little later at night, so I guess some people change a little bit their training schedules and things like that to get used to it. Did you do anything differently? Yeah, my my coaches were just really talking about like I will fight like 12 here. It's, but that's like seven back home. Mm -hmm. So like, it's not many difference, but at the end of the day, I'm waking up like nine in the morning and I will fight like at 12. Even if at home is our time, that doesn't matter, the time change anyways. But I really don't try to think about it like, oh, I have to adjust myself. I just, I just wake up right now, like it's 2 p.m. right now. I just wake up and it's not like I'm feeling weird. I just do whatever my body tells me and at the end of the day, when the cage is locked, there's no change time in our Bullshit like that. Those are excuses for people that is not prepared. I'm prepared and I'm ready to fight. Uh, so let's get to your fight. You're fighting John Lineker. Uh, and yesterday, he was just saying, he was thanking you for taking this fight because he said many people wouldn't. Um, for you, you always said, I'll take any fight whenever, wherever. Like that's something you've, you've stressed. Was that really an easy call for you? Like the name came, John Lineker, Brazil. Was that an immediate yes? Yeah, easy. Just when, just when my, I asked my wife if she would have a second kid. <laughs> It was easy, yeah. I, my mother just sent me the name, John Lineker, and I was like, are you asking me? Or we get offered this? And it was yes. And then I started like, just sending a bunch of things, like, hey, I, I want it, I want it. And then I call my coach, he's like, I know what you want to tell me. And I'm like, so yes or no? Let, let me think for a couple minutes. Okay, I call him, 10 minutes. You, did you think? I'm like, hey, can you give me a day? I'm like, no, because if I give you a day, some parents can take the fight. But I knew nobody wanted to fight him, and even worse in Brazil. Because, from what I know, Caraway was asking for that fight, but in the US. And then, I don't care the place, he's the same cage at the end of the day. Different partner for, that, for the dance, but I was just excited about the fight, and I think it's a big step in competition, and challenges are what turn me on, so um, I will be fired that night. Why do you think people were not willing to fight him? Well, he just needs one punch to sleep you, but I also feel that I need one need to sleep him too, so we will see who who, who gets in the collision first and who's a smarter fighter, because I'm not thinking on get peace and swing in the middle of the cage. Even if I'm peace, I won't do it, and I just feel I, I'm prepared and I'm in the, in the right path to take this type of opportunities. I got a great staff on my back, like, getting me ready all the time, and. I just do what they told me. They told me something, I, w I would do it. And I, I feel comfortable with the people they have today. And it's the people who make me want three fights in a row. So why not take a big fight now? Awesome. You, you did mention it's a big step up in competition. And we were just looking at the odds. And you were the biggest underdog in the card. Uh, I don't know if you saw it yet. Uh, and it might change, obviously. But is that surprising to you in any way, being that you're coming off this little streak? Or was it something that? Well, kind of underdog or favorite, at the end of the day, it's the same thing of time change or the water change, whatever. Like, the catch is going to be locked, underdog or favorite. I don't know, those things don't bother me. And even if I start being the favorite someday, those things won't change me because I just feel everything you make is on the training camp, everything you make is in the decisions you take in life before the fight, and then. Whatever you decide to do in the cage is what you will definitely the results and everything. So I just feel if I'm prepared, if I'm healthy, there's no favorite or none. Like it's just about who wanted more and trust me, nobody wanted more than me. You did say you were expecting a fight at the night just now. How do you 
does that mean you're kind of expecting it to be kind of a war, or why do you feel like it's gonna be kind of the main? Well, just the the styles, like like I'm I never see nobody smaller than me, but also never see nobody bigger than me. I, we're humans, and I know he has, he have a big heart, but I got two, I got one in my hand and one on my chest, so we will see. I, I won't back down for nothing, like. Somebody can, I already get hurt before, I already get mounted and somebody throw elbows on my face, like, those things don't back me up, like, I'm just down for anything and I feel that we just keep going till, till, till the fight is over. And I really believe I will beat Lineker and I have everything to beat him. I just have to be the smart fighter and just don't get in that dumb game that the old fighters do, they just start swinging with him, it's like, it's like somebody go to the ground with me and give me the arm. I will snap that. You know, it's, it's not like that. Or put your hands down, I will kick your head. So you have to play smart and just undo what your opening is the best. And do you already, uh, being that, like we were saying, you're coming here to Brazil, you're a big underdog, this is a big step up in competition. What happens if you beat John Lineker? Like, where do you go from there? Do you already think about that? What it means for you in the division? What you get to ask for, really? Oh yeah, I also practice my my speech winning the fight, so I, I I can prepare for anything. But I really believe if I win this fight, I want somebody in between Rivera and Cruz. Uh, I want one of those two. I already talked to my manager about it, and I feel that's the fight. It makes sense for me. If the UFC want to do anything else, I'm down. I'm, I, there's also a lot of fights in December, like a bantamweight fight. I already saw all of them. And I'm like, well, somebody's going to get hair and I will be healthy. I will be naked, but I fly back, get the weight down and put my gloves on. But I feel if I win this fight, I want somebody from that fight. Because that's a title eliminator. But you never know. What happened if the dealer showed Garvin Garvin is too close, they want to make a rematch. So you never know what's going to happen. So I can ask for the winner because the winner probably is not going to go for the title right away. Or probably the one who loses in a really close fight. You, you never know with MMA. So nothing, it's true that, that it, that's supposed to be the title eliminator, but at the same time, that couldn't happen because that fight should be close or somebody get hurt and they keep they put that fight for another show. So. I want somebody from that fight, or Rivera or Cruz, and I feel I match great with both, and also one of them owe me one, and I want to make him pay. One of the, you say you owe uh, Rivera, right? Yeah. You, that, that yeah. you kind of want to, you have that chip on your shoulder, like you want to fight him. Yeah, I got bunches on my, sh on, on my elbow, and surgery, they take it off, but the only way to take that one is to beat his ass, because he was talking too much, and he also, he say things that don't make sense, like, you know, if he says he's better than me, that don't offend me at all. But he kind of put my daughter in the line and things like that. And he said that he was a bully when he was a kid. But with that size, I don't think he was a bully when he was a kid. I think he was a bully one, but whatever. I don't know him before. I also respect him as a person. As a fighter, I don't respect him at all because he wasn't that professional. And I feel that fight makes sense for me. If I win this fight, it's going to be big. And as I said before, the next fight is going to be more important than this one, and I'm focused on this right now. I kind of want that, but at the end of the day, that, that doesn't matter because it's all about winning this fight on Saturday night. Uh, it's interesting because it would make sense for you. That's the fight that makes sense in terms of rankings, and like you said, it will be sort of a title eliminator. If it happens, it's a good step up. But at the same time, you have this attitude where you're willing to step in on short notice and go someplace else and, and go to a different country, like you don't care. How do you balance that? You know, your attitude, like, you, you, I will do it, yes, I'll take this fight with your career plan. How do you balance that? Well, and what as you say, like, I will fight, like, let's see, I won this fight and they want me to fight, like, four months from here and fight a big fight, like, probably going to put, it's going to put me close to the title. And then, Two weeks later, somebody gets her. I, like personally, I would like to jump in that fight, even if the guy's not rank or whatever. Why? Because I'm fighting somebody that is rank and I'm not rank. So why, if I'm rank someday, why I won't fight somebody that is on rank? You, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, like, it's like karma, make balance on things. But also, if it's a big fight that makes sense for get a title shot someday, I will listen to 
the oldest people that is in my corner, like my coaches, my manager, like, okay, what, what I should do? But me, I would like to fight. On a, I, I would like to be on a Saturday in a UFC in, in, the, in the church watching the fights. I'd be like, you want to fight the next fight? That's, that would be crazy. I would love to do something like that. But I know it's kind of hard to happen. But those are the things I like. I, I like just like, oh, you want to fight? Okay, put the gloves on because I'm, I'm training. If I'm training, if my card is okay, like, I, I won't forget how to fight. Like, Verdun fought with, they changed opponents in, in a minute notice. He was going to the arena watching the other guy. So those things are kind of pretty cool to do, I think. Um, but anyways, the, the, the main goal is being a world champion. So I want to do something dumb. That, like, I'm not, I'm not that dumb. I just like to do crazy things. But if it's like something really important in the line, I will wait and let the, the people that have experience tell me what to do. And uh, bless you, you've, you've, we've, you've had kind of a spike, I guess, in popularity, at least from my perspective, after your last fight. I think more people saw it, you're getting your name out there. How is that translating to your life back home in Ecuador? Like, are, are you kind of famous there now? People know who you are. Do you feel like you're leveraging Ecuador, Ecuadorian MMA? Yeah, I, I'm getting obviously bigger, you know. Wins get you all the things you want, you know. You don't even have to ask for things when you win fights because they, they just come by. And of course, in Ecuador, people is like supporting me more. And I saw the like to the people who support me, like guys. Sometimes it's hard to answer to everybody because people get pissed because it's like, oh, you're getting too high. I'm like, I'm not getting too high. I read your message, motivate me, uh, fulfill my heart. But it's hard to answer by one by one. And I just send like a big message like to everybody, and it's kind of cool. Like before, it used to be big, but now it's huge. And I know it's going to start getting bigger. But I just think the way to keep this is winning fights, is that's a primary thing. But also, just keep being the same person, just keep being cool to everybody and just be kind to the people because that, that's what really makes you bigger. Because win or lose fights, people forget about those things in a couple of years. How you act to other people, how you treat people is what it will get you to the next level in, in anything in life, I think.